Today on Dark Holes, Sydney Sweeney's ass has been presented to the public. Michael Jordan's son gets caught doing an illicit substance. Craig Jones, if you don't know who he is, you will find out. He hosts an intersex fight. That means man versus woman. What's going on in the world? And a strange sex fetish that could leave people with a broken nose. All that on Dark Holes. Sydney Sweeney showed her ass to the public. Everyone went crazy. Everyone went, oh, a wooga. Okay, here's the thing. I don't want to be misunderstood. I like that Sydney Sweeney showed her ass to the public. I think that's a good thing. I think that's good for society. I think it was good for my mental health and many other people's mental health. I bet there were some people that were on the edge. There's some suicides that were prevented because of that ass pick that day. Some people said, hey, you know what? Maybe I, life is worth living and this ass is, is, is enough to keep me in this mortal realm. Yeah, yeah. But that being said... That being said, even though I'm very appreciative that she gave us a little ass to munch on, because she did give us a lot of tits. She gave us so much tits over the years, and we were full of milk. Even if you're lactose intolerant, you slurped up the milk she gave, and you farted your ass off. So a little ass to munch on was great. But, 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 the ass was fine, which I, th I thought it was fine. I'm not, like, her ass isn't out of the expectations of where I thought her ass was. I thought it, she had an okay ass because in any picture where she's, like, in a bikini, I kind of inspected on my own research. Uh, and when she's in a dress, it's never made a front page news. Whoa, look out the swing. She's got an ass. I knew her ass wasn't that crazy. But the internet took took to their pages, took to their keyboards, typed on their phones, and everyone was was tweeting out like, oh, man, this is like if Superman was immune to kryptonite. This is like if O.J. Simpson wasn't a serial killer. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, you're trying to you're trying to sell like, oh, this is like, oh, now the package is complete. The ass was OK. Don't talk about this ass like this is prime time uh, Jennifer Lopez. Like this is Iggy Azalea. Like this is Mia McClova. Like this is Alana Rhodes level ass. OK, it was a decent ass. It was a respectable ass. And like I said, I like that she showed the ass. The angle was selling it a lot. It was really up in there. I could practically taste it, which again, I'm happy that I could. But it wasn't that crazy. Let's not lose our minds over this ass, guys. Let's br let's rein it in. I know there's probably Sydney Sydney Sweeney lovers out there that are gonna fucking try and uh, set up a witch hunt to burn me down, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It's you just you just have to accept. That it, she doesn't have an ass, not that much of an ass. The ass is all right, and honestly, I think that is good. I think it's a better package because part of what makes Sydney Sweeney so desirable to the public is that she isn't too hot. Sydney Sweeney is hot. Don't get me wrong. Sydney Sweeney is hot, but she's not too hot. Sydney Sweeney is a level of hot. That I'm like, oh, my boy has dated someone as hot as Sydney Sweeney. I've banged someone as hot as Sydney Sweeney. So your mind goes, huh, maybe I could fuck Sydney Sweeney. That's part of the appeal is this girl next door homey attainability level of hot. You take someone like Anna Darmus, Anna Darmus is crazy hot. Anna Darmus, I would say, is too hot. Anna de Armas is so hot that if I fantasize about fucking her, it would have to start with me saving her from a mugging. That's how hot Anna de Armas is. I can't realistically include her into my sexual fantasy without some sort of crazy mishap happening. But Sydney Sweeney, that attainability gives you hope. Hope is the secret ingredient in her hotness, guys. Ladies and gents, that's what that's what you want to see.
So I think you all just need to calm down a little bit. Y'all need to calm down a little bit on her ass, which, like I said, was fine. But hey, guys, this is Black, or uh, Black, Dark Holes. Dark Holes. What is Dark Holes? It is my podcast. We got a few holes that we're going to be diving into today, as I said off the top. But first, let's get into what's going on with me. Right now, uh, I'm playing Black Myth Wukong. That's what I uh, started playing, that game from China that everyone's going crazy over. It broke an all-time Steam record. I don't know if it was an all-time congruent player record. It had over 2 million people playing it at a single time. I don't know if that's an all-time like game record or just all-time record for a single-player game. But it broke a Steam record, and that doesn't include PlayStation or the other platforms people are playing it on. But China is in the game market now. Of course, this game was very controversial. I don't know if you guys saw some of the things that were released about it. Uh, if you were a streamer and you got a code for the game, there was something that said you couldn't include feminist propaganda in your streaming of the game, which I don't even really know what the fuck that means, <laughs> feminist propaganda. All I know is that like the game director kind of got nabbed on something where he apparently said some sexist stuff. He, he, he had some... Uh, uh, like, I guess, I don't even, I think it was on a, a, a Chinese social media platform, but where he was talking about game development and, and, uh, compared it to abortions and miscarriages where he's like, sometimes you work so long on a game and you have to abort it or it, it miscarriages like a, a, like a stillborn fetus. Like he made some pretty graphic <laughs> descriptions about game development. Uh, but there, I think there was some stuff that was more severe than that. I didn't really dig into it. But they got nabbed for that, and people were like, whoa, what's going on over here at uh, Game Science? I think the studio that makes the game. Uh, and uh, they, in interviews, they were asking, like, hey, are you guys going to comment on some of this stuff? And they just said, nah. They were like, no, no, we're not. We're not going to comment on it. And so they've kind of gone full China with it. And they're, they've sent out some stuff where they're like, you can't talk about COVID-19 either. They're like, you can't talk about COVID. You can't talk about uh, um uh, feminist propaganda, and then there's some other rules that they're like, "Hey, you have, th listen in uh, over here in China, we got some censorship laws, and there's certain shit you can't talk about. So if you're gonna have free code for our game, you can't fucking talk about it either. I want to know what defines feminist propaganda for them. Like, is it like like does Brat Summer fall under feminist propaganda? I would think, yeah, that's some feminist propaganda if I've ever heard. Ladies out there having a good time, we gotta cut that out." We got we to gotta turn that shit off. Brat Summer, there's no Brat Summer in China. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Brat Summer never crossed the pond over there. There, you try, you wear the color green, you get locked up, go over to re-education, man. You mention Brat Summer or Winnie the Pooh, that's the last your family sees you. You go over to one of those work camps where you're breaking boulders and gluing them back together. That's what the fuck you get put on. Brat Summer. Chinese Brat Summer? You want a Chinese Brat Summer? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Not happening. Okay. What else is going on with me? Uh, <laughs> um, mm, swallowing noises. Slurping some water. Oh, we're continuing on the fitness journey. Okay, last week I went to the gym three times. I already went twice this week. We're, we're already so we're already off to a great start. And I think I think I think I'm getting in a good rhythm, but I also have no shows this month. I took uh, August off, so it's easier for me to get in this rhythm. But maybe this is what I need. Maybe I need a month off from doing shit and being on the road and being in all these different cities to get figure out what my rhythm is, and then I can get everything in line, and then I'll be killing it on uh, when I am on the road next month. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe it'll all fall apart. Uh, porn. I just reduced. I just reduced. But there was like, I think a day last week where I watched porn. Like, I mean by watch porn, I mean like jerked off to completion like five times. And the day before it was like three times. The day before that was like four times. It's been a lot of fucking jerking, dude. I'm back on Pornhub too. I didn't go to Pornhub for so long because it felt a little too produced. But I don't know. I guess I just, I got a, a, a hankering to go to the hub. And I was checking out some of the stuff here. And I was like, you know what? There actually is some pretty high quality content on this platform. And I started drinking up the hub like crazy. I was falling in love with the hub. Maybe that's part of why I've been just jorking my shit so much. It's because there's just different videos over there. They got a different style, different stuff they're pushing to the front page. And I'm like, yeah, this stuff is making me want to jork. 
And I was liking it. I was really liking it, dude. Uh, but I'm trying to cut back. Trying to cut back. That's probably... I've been really good at not eating garbage. Uh, like, I would say five out of seven days a week, I'm not eating garbage. So that's good. Uh, I'm getting back in the gym. Uh, I'm going to sleep pretty early. Uh, I haven't been drinking. I think I drank... I did drink last week. But it was one... It was one, one drink. No, two. It was two drinks. Uh, but I've been reducing that like crazy. Even when I do have moments where I drink, I'm drinking very, very little. Uh, so I'm like, what's really left on the table? It is the jorking. I gotta just. Re I can jork still. I just don't want to watch as much porn. But I can just. I gotta go into the the flight logs, into the brainstem, and pull out some jork material. Uh, and I do like doing that because sometimes you can uh, create a scenario, much to Anna de Armas saving her from mugging, you can create a scenario that is so jorkable and so enjoyable just off of your own imagination uh, that you can never, like sometimes I, I scroll and I open videos and I get so many things, so many tabs open and, and I'm like, none of these are really scratching the spot when the spot is in my mind and I have the power within. That's motivational and encouraging. Your brain is stronger than anything on the internet. Uh, mm. Let's get to our five-star review of the week. Five-star review of the week. Uh, this comes in from J. Hinder. It's J. Hinderks 3 or J. Hinder K3. Uh, either or. I'm not sure exactly how to say your name. It said, I had late-stage cancer and an operable tumor, but then I listened to Dark Holes. Thank you for saving my life. J Hinder Hinderks three, you're welcome. You know what? Uh, I think now that I have saved your life via this uh, fantastic platform and podcast, I feel like your life is now mine. I own it, and I can do with you what I want. Um, first order of business is I want to I want to investigate this Chinese brat summer. I want you you to fly to China. And you're going to go around the streets and you're going to interview people about Brat Summer. You're going to wear a Brat Summer t-shirt. And you're going to try to spread Brat Summer propaganda and see if you end up in a Chinese jail. That's what we want to see. That's your first task I'm sending you on now that you are legally mine. My, like, human slave. Your soul is mine. Both... Like, le like it within the United States, uh, I would say a global government, within all global governments, law, your body belongs to me. And also in a spiritual realm across all religions, your soul belongs to me. So, yeah, get to work on that. Get to work on that or I'll use some sort of like voodoo magic to torture you from far away. Uh, but thank you so much for supporting the podcast. I really appreciate that. Um... Okay, where do we start? Where do we start? Michael Jordan's son does coke. Michael Jordan's son does coke. I'm sure you guys all saw this. It was during the Paris Olympics. He was out there in Paris snorting some cocaine. To be fair, to be fair, Marcus Jordan was doing coke. But it, 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 we don't know that it was coke. All the tabloids, all the people spewing the stuff about it, the memes were like, yo, buddy's doing coke. But... Uh. The mainstream media is a little bit more respectable than my meme channels. They got a little integrity left, those guys. Not really, but they got a little bit left. They have a little integrity left. And they said he was snorting an unknown white powder. We're not assuming that it's cocaine. We don't know what kind of drug it was. It could be ketamine. He could be snorting ketamine, doing some sort of ketamine therapy on his own. That's a possibility. Like, I think he could have gone to a doctor. The doctor said, hey, you got depression, dude. You know what is a thing we're trying out to cure depression? Uh, we got ketamine, ketamine therapy. How about I, I could administer this for you, or I could just give you this, like, loose bag of powder and a key. Each key is, like, a roughly a dose. And uh, you take this and you go to Paris with it. And then you can administer your own treatment next to your girlfriend in Paris. That's a possibility too. Or it could be some third drug. I don't even know. What is another? The, he's fucking, he's in Illuminati range. 
He's Michael Jordan's son, dude. This guy was born and bred in the Illuminati factories. He came out and they did the ritual on his forehead and they sp they did like the goat's blood and they put the owl crown on him and they chanted all the stuff and then they shot him up full of adrenochrome and they're going to be like, you're going to be a forever kid. You're a prince of Michael Jordan. And then he, he so he could have uh, some fancy white designer drug that we don't even get to get our hands on because we're peasants, dude. Have you thought about that? Huh? Everyone says it's Coke. Maybe it's something you don't even, you're too classless to snort. Huh? That would be nice. I would like to get my hands on a new drug. I feel like there was a new one that just came out recently. What was something that everyone was doing? I mean, nicotine. The nicotine pouches are kind of the new drug on the market. If you guys, because I wasn't a nicotine guy, got into these zins and these pouches, and I was like, whoa, wowee. But then they kind of started making my tummy sick when they weren't at the beginning. And they also, I feel like they started doing the inverse effect where I started to get like sleepy when I would take one, which I was like, what the fuck is going on, dude? This is supposed to give me zip zap zoopin'. And now I'm going to bed? Mm -mm, don't like that. So I'm off the Zins. Really, I'm only on the Jorks. That's the only drug I'm on right now is just jorking my paintus. Um, but yeah, Michael Jordan's son was, uh, uh, was, was seen doing these drugs. And, and then everyone was like, uh, I started comp comparing him to a Brawny. Brawny James. Little Braun. They're like, oh, man. People were saying, hey, how come... Uh, uh, the Michael Jordan song, Marcus Jordan is out here doing drugs. Bronny's like in the NBA or is he in the NBA or is he going to the NBA? He's trying to get to the NBA, whatever. He's NBA uh, driven. He has NBA aspirations, whatever the fuck it is. And then uh, other people were like, yo, if the Bronny did this, uh, uh, people would freak out. But Marcus gets away with it. For one, Marcus is 33 years old and Bar Bronny is fucking 19 years old. So let's all chill on those comparisons. Um... But I think part of why we it, it, everyone was like, first of all, I didn't even know who the fuck Marcus Jordan was. He's not throwing his his, his life and his career and all the stuff he does in our face. No, he's living off in the shadows, doing drugs, partying. Because when you become ultra rich and ultra famous or you're born into a large amount of wealth and your dad is like one of the greatest public figures of all time, like it, Michael Jordan is one of the most famous people on the planet. Marcus Jordan had a couple options when he came out of the womb. It's like, do I take the brawny route? And I try to live up to my dad's potential. I'm constantly living in a shadow. If I was a basketball player, I would have always been compared to him. If I went to any sport, I would have always been compared to him. If I was a businessman, I would be compared to his shoe business. And I could just live in my dad's shadow for eternity. But that is at least some type of light on me and I probably would be reasonably, reasonably successful with the amount of resources that my dad could provide to me. Or you take the other route of Illuminati Prince and you go, yeah, I'm just going to indulge in the billions that my dad has created. I'm, I'm just going to stay out of everyone's way. That's something that's really nice about Marcus Jordan. He's not tweeting like, this is what's wrong with the world. This is what's wrong with poor people. He's not throwing shit in our face. He's not commenting on our regular society. He's doing coke in Paris with his fucking girlfriend. The only reason we saw him is because some creep took his picture. If I saw some dude, uh, see, the guy who took his picture probably just saw, like, yo, look at this guy doing coke out in the open. What a crazy dude. He probably didn't even know it was Marcus Jordan. I don't, I couldn't pr pick out Marcus Jordan out of a fucking, uh, uh, if you lined up all of Michael Jordan's kids and were like, which one's Marcus? I wouldn't even, I, I couldn't know. I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. No one knows. And that's, he's, he's taking the route of just private prints, which I think is great. Live in secrecy, dude. Okay, but also, also, part of the reason why the comparison isn't equal is because uh, Michael Jordan and LeBron James aren't equal. Not like basketball wise, but just uh, like Michael Jordan had some incredible scandals. He had some saucy shit going on. He had like a gambling scandal so big, such severe gambling debts that people were like, yo, was his dad? killed because of his gambling debts, which I think is a complete cons conspiracy and completely untrue. But that's how crazy his gambling scandal was. LeBron has no scan. What's LeBron's scandal? Oh, is he getting hair plugs? Is he insecure about balding? 
boo, that's so boring. Give me some juice, man. So if Bronny was doing coke, that would be a bigger scandal than, than any of his dad's scandal. Marcus doing coke is like, yeah, fucking, he's into some crazy shit just like his dad. That's, that's, it's, he's, it, it makes sense for him to do that. So I want LeBron to give us some juice. Even Tom Brady, who's like uh, some sort of cyborg, so some sort of I, uh, autistic goody-goody, he even had some good like cheating scan. Like, oh, yo, he's cheating at football. He's at the deflate gate and fucking filming the other team, even though that was kind of more Bill Belichick. But he was like involved in it. And then he's like not going back to his wife because he loves football so much. And then he's fucking not d doing well in the season. Like he had a bunch of j a gossipy shit floating around him. He went on a roast. There was a bunch of shit floating around him that made it good. Give me a Tiger Woods level scandal for LeBron. Like Tiger Woods with all these hoes hang out. Give me like, I want a scandal where like LeBron has seven to 13 chicks in a, like a, a, a facility somewhere that walk around on all fours and he like feeds them in a trough like animals and he, and he wears overalls and that's his kink. He likes to own chicks and treat them like pigs and piglets and calves and shit. And then when they run away, he chases them down and wrestles them and hog ties them. And that's how he say, stays so fit in the off season is wrestling these pig chicks that he owns. That's fun, dude. That's an athlete that I give a shit about. Don't give me, oh, man, he broke another record. No, give me, like, he's doing some wild shit that's illegal or immoral. Um, we don't want these moral athletes. God damn. Something else that was confirmed from this Michael Jordan, Michael Marcus Jordan, from this Marcus Jordan uh, scandal was that uh, he was with his new girlfriend, who I didn't look up the name of, uh, and I don't really care about this is like why the fuck are we talking about his girlfriend it's only because he was with i don't know if you guys remember this he was with larissa pippen before larissa pippen uh i think that's her name i wrote it down is it larissa pippen larissa pippen yeah larissa pippen um so yeah he was with uh, larissa pippen for a year who if you don't know that's scotty pippen's ex-wife and it's just a crazy situation where apparently uh, uh, Larissa Pippen has gone out of her way to make sure Scotty Pippen's life is shitty and she hates him for some, I don't know what happened between those two, but she knows that Scotty Pippen hates Michael Jordan. So she's like, I, I'm going to try and fuck Michael Jordan probably was unsuccessful. There was like, well then I'll fuck his son to have a chick hate you so bad, bad to be like, she's going to be like, I'll try and fuck your enemies. And if I can't, I'll fuck their spawn. And then I think she fucked future too. Cause future hated Scotty Pippen. And, and, and there, she's like, I'm going to let everyone who you hate or hates you jizz inside me, Scotty. And I'm going to make it a public affair. Holy shit, dude. So if you want to fuck Larissa Pippen, just start a beef with Scotty Pippen. And then she's 50, but she's still, it's still pretty. She's good for 50, dude. She looks really nice for 50. So yeah, I'll start a beef with Scotty Pippen. And Larissa, come down to some of the shitty areas in New York City and get blown out on a, on a, a mattress on the floor. I bet you've been living the high life for so long, you forgot what that's even like. Roll down to some scuzzy area in New York City. I'll blow you out, dude. I'll blow you out good. I'll give you a yeast infection so bad, those Illuminati doctors won't be able to get it out. You can go to every shadow government surgeon. They'll do all sorts of tests on your cooch, and none of them will be able to get rid of the yeast infectious infection. My hog will lay into you. That's how bad I'll beat it up, dude. I swear to God. I swear, I swear it here on the Dark Holes podcast i'll give you the yeasty of your life dude it'll reek you'll reek out of your puss like crazy dude um but yeah uh yeah uh i guess yeah goes this goes out to the dark holes fans uh, if you want to fuck but i feel like just leave scotty pippen alone though i don't know scotty pippen like i we also the documentary we all, if you didn't watch The Last Dance, go watch The Last Dance. It's great. But when he, like, doesn't get up off the bench to play the game because he's, like, kind of being like, fuck you, like, I'm supposed to be the best player now that Michael Jordan's gone, he seemed a little spiteful. But it, some of it was rightfully so. Like, he was, like, the one of the best players in the league and he was paid poorly and it seems like he never got his recognition. And he seems like he's sour about that. So I think we just got to leave Scottie Pippen alone. But l poor Larissa Pippen. Not poor, but Larissa Pippen won't leave him alone. She won't. Who knows what she's up to now? I, I saw something when I was looking this up when I was like, oh, the whole Larissa Pippen thing happening. She's like, I'm single and ready to mingle. 50. And like I said, still got it. Still got it. 
But you come near me, Larissa, you're going to be pushing a sourdough loaf out like a baby, dude. You're gonna, there's going to be a sourdough starter up in your pussy. Actually, I think sourdough doesn't use any yeast. What's a yeasty bread? Corn? Cornbread? Does that use yeast? I don't think so either. Maybe a rye. A loaf of rye bread. Whew, punk. Is going to fall out of your pussy daily. Daily rye bread out the puss, dude. Buttered. Ready to go. Garlicky. <laughs> okay, Jesus. All right, let's just move on. Let's move on to the next one. Um, Craig Jones. Craig Jones. Uh, Craig Jones, uh, the Craig Jones Invitational, uh, this is going to be, this is like, I think, a perfect type of dark hole for you guys because I feel like so many of you people don't know what happened here, even though how popular this was. So let me lay the whole foundation for you. Craig Jones is one of the best grapplers in the world. Jiu-jitsu guy, cha-cha-cha, put you in an arm bar, put you in a choke, put you to sleep, that kind of shit. You guys know jiu-jitsu, you know the ins and outs. Uh, he... Had some sort of thing where he didn't like how he was being paid or how the money split was. And he was upset with some of the jiu-jitsu organizations that do big events. And he said, fuck you. I'm going to do my own event. And he like sold out a big arena in Las Vegas. It was very, very successful. But the hype going into the event was the juice. He goes, okay, we're going to have all these events and all these people winning. There's like $2 million in prizes up for everyone to win. But there's going to be a couple super fights. To one of the super fights, Mackenzie Dern, who is in the UFC and everyone jerks off to her regularly. She's got a great ass. She's pretty hot. One of the hottest chicks in the UFC. Uh... She wrestles or she jujitsu some other chick. I don't know who the other chick is, uh, but then, yeah, I'm not a news. Well, this isn't a news thing. We just talk about weird shit, okay? Who the other chick is isn't important. What's important is now you know you can jerk off to Mackenzie Dern. Um, she the she lost Mackenzie lost, but that's not even the juice. The juice is Craig Jones jujitsued a chick. It was him versus a chick, and the chick he went up against was fucking Gabby Garcia. If you don't know who Gabby Garcia is, Gabby Garcia, they said her stats in the intro. I think they flubbed him a bit, but I don't think they flubbed her height. 6'4", tall-ass chick. They said 300 pounds. I don't think she's 300 pounds, but she's probably 250. She's probably 250. If you look on Wikipedia, they say like 6'2", something, something, but that's wrong. That She's way bigger than that. If you look, producer, bring up a picture of Gabby Garcia right now. Her like max steroided out. She was on a ton of roids for years, fighting in MMA, doing jujitsu, and she was this massive per Look at that. Look at that. Give me more pics of Gabby. Look at holy shit, dude. You can't tell me. This chick is, that's her now. That's her now. So she's kind of off the juice now. And she's not as muscular as before, but she's still obviously very, very big. And in that face off with Craig Jones, I believe she has high heels on. So she looks taller than she is. Um, but uh, she she used to be this massive, hulking, like muscular creature. Think of someone you could like cast as juggernaut in a movie. Just muscle and muscle and muscle. She had an OnlyFans and stuff you could go check out. You could see her muscly body with her big tits. She has like one of those Easter Island heads, like a long rectangular head with like a big Jay Leno chin. Yeah, look at her next to that lady she's going to fight and she has shoulders like bowling balls. She was on a ton of steroids. I think she's admitted that. And now she's not as, she's still like big, but not as muscular. Um, so, Craig Jones goes, yo, we're going to do a super fight, me versus Gabby. Intersex fight. Gabby's talked about for years how she's wanted to do an intersex fight. This is juicy shit, guys. Um, then, yeah, then they 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 do all the build up to the fight. And at a press thing, like they did this uh, like a, almost like a podcast. And they kind of talked about what was going to go down and how they were going to do it. Craig Jones goes, uh, or uh, Gabby says, um, I've never lost a leg lock. No one's ever leg lock beat me. Craig Jones goes, if I beat you by leg lock, we have to do an OnlyFans collab. Whoa! Are you fucking titillating my balls right now? Him and the giant test from Brazil? The Brazilian beast going down on OnlyFans if he wins by leg lock? Juicy, juicy shit, right, guys? That gets everyone's caboose a little caboose in. So uh, Gabby shakes on. She goes, and if I beat you, you have to pay me a million million dollars. So it beats him anyway. 
So then it goes to event time. When they do the weigh-in as well, Craig grabs her face and kisses her. She freaks out and goes, you take it too fucking far. She, like, starts attacking him. Like, you're fucking blah, 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 blah. She's freaking out. She goes, fight's canceled. Then the fight's back on. I won't, uh, yeah, yeah. They, 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 the fight was quickly back on. Maybe that was he told Gabby, I'm going to kiss you. It's going to help create more hype. Uh, or maybe he didn't. I don't know. I don't know. It's all, it's all, we're all trying to create hype here. So it's like, you do what you need to do to sell the fucking fight. Then the fight happens. Craig Jones wins, but via choke. So no OnlyFans collab, which is depressing, man. I, that's what I didn't like. Congratulations to Craig for putting on such a successful event and really getting, like, I don't pay attention to when the fuck jujitsu events are happening, but I was paying attention to this one. Because he's like, I'm going to grapple this gigantic, one-of-a-kind freakazoid lady. This lady could kill me, guys. If I ran into Gabby Garcia in the street, I there would be like a less than 1% chance that I survive. If I had like a knife or something, maybe. But should, there's nine times out of ten, nine uh, like fractional 99.99999 times out of ten, she murders me with her bare hands, dude. Isn't that crazy? Ah, uh, but that's interesting shit. I want more intersex fights, dude. Let's do big lady versus little guy. Let's do like guy with one arm versus a big lady. Let's do like that dude who's like kind of a geo dude kind of guy. I don't know if you've seen him. He has like no lower half of his body and he's just kind of a muscular torso and walks around on his hands. He's an MMA. Let's do that geo dude guy versus a chick. Let's do let's keep the freaks fighting. The freaks were made to fight. And I want to see every single possible matchup we can do as the world gets harder and we run out of water. Let's make the circus fucked, dude. The bread is getting tainted. There's weird shit in the food. The circus should get weird, too. All right. Bread and circus, baby. Uh, Where are we at? Actually, should we go? Uh, yeah, I feel like that's those are the things I wanted to cover before we get into our write-ins. It's time for the Ridings. A couple of you wrote in with actual like long stories this time. Long stories with lots of little details in them. So we're gonna read them out here on the 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 pod, and we can get into what what's going on with you guys at home. So first one, one I previewed. This is a this is the long one. This is the first long one we've gotten on the pod. Exciting stuff, guys. Exciting, you little sluts. Um, okay. First, he says, "Keep me anonymous for the pod." So in personal encounters, he can introduce himself. It's like Batman and Robin or something. I'm Batman, by the way. Ugh. Okay, keep me anonymous for the pod. But when I was in college, I had a six by six mirror that was mounted on the wall next to my bed. One night, I'm giving this girl the shrimpy and we both stood up and started having intercourse with her facing the mirror. Hot hot when you fucking fuck and watch each other what i really like doing that because watching myself fuck it's something about it turns off my ability to come i can't come i'm like look at how silly this fucking idiot looks in the mirror dude this guy i can't sometimes if i'm fucking and there's a mirror beside i and i think i'm close to coming i just glance over at myself and just the eye contact with my own soul makes me go uh, -uh and you can't jizz i just feel like i look so silly like you just see my hips like bouncing up and down going into this lady's pussy <laughs> she could be doing it she could be saying the exact right equation to make me jizz and if i look at my own reflection it goes uh-uh uh-uh can't jizz dude can't jizz i i just i look too silly fucking okay because it doesn't look like porn porn is all you're getting the angles the dude's leaning back everything is aesthetically pleasing when you're really fucking you look uh kind of like a a a Komodo dragon or like a, a I don't know, like a, any sort of monitor lizard just gnawing on a giant piece of meat. Just, just giving it, just humping away, dude. It looks so silly. Anyways, back to this. Uh, it's the six by six mirror, giving her the shrimpy. Uh, the next day I noticed handprints were on the mirror and I thought I'd start collecting them like Pokemon cards. Creepy serial killer vibes. So every time I brought a girl over, I would do the same thing, but I play, but I pay real close attention uh, to the handprints, and if they weren't printing hard enough, I would grab 
Okay, hold on. And if they weren't printing hard enough, I would grab them by their hair, pull their head back, and pretend like I was going to slam their face into the mirror. What the fuck? <laughs> Dude. <gasps> what the fuck? So if you guys aren't, uh, the first time I read this, I didn't really understand what he meant. But he's fucking the girl. She's like putting her hands maybe next to the mirror or close to the mirror. Maybe she just has her fingertips on it. He goes, that's not good enough. Grabs their hair, pulls it back, shoves their face forward at a rapid pace. Like they're going to smash into the mirror. And so they stop themselves physically on the mirror. And he's like, ah, that'll do. That'll do. I need to get these handprints because I'm Patrick Bateman and I need my little trophies after I fuck these girls. Weird. Weird, dude. Um, okay. So every time I brought a girl over, da 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 da, I would play close attention. I guess you don't want the handprints to cover the same places. So you'd have to bring over girls of different heights as well. So like one girl would be reaching at the top, then you bring over a little midget and you fuck her on your knees and she's touching at the bottom. Or you get a girl to bend over real far, get her on her knees, and then like you're doing all sorts of weird shit so you get the hands in different places. And girls are wondering like, why is this mirror so dirty? Because um, girls pay attention to that kind of shit. And they're probably like, I'm not going to ask him any questions because if these are all indeed handprints, he might kill me if I catch on to what he's doing. Uh, 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 uh. Pay real close attention. This would work 98% of the time because most would catch themselves leaving handprints and I'd have my success. Unfortunately, 2% of the time estimated. That's what it says in brackets. Estimated 2% of the time. It did not work and I slammed a girl's face into the mirror so when he says two percent of the time that mean and he says a girl's face this this happened more than once more than once he full-on smashed a chick's face into the mirror <laughs> uh it did not work and i slammed her face in the mirror it did not break her nose or the mirror but her pussy became drier than the sahara Okay, a lot to unpack here, ladies and gentlemen. This is crazy, crazy. So <laughs> what I'm wondering is how each chick was reacting to you seeming like you were going to kill her. Like, hey, here, I'm going to smash your head off a mirror. That's like a, that's a murder move. I think that's an opening murder move. Let me disorient you, concuss you immediately, and then I can go in for the kill. I'll strangle you to death or something. So each, I, what's crazy is the other chicks, you went to smash. They stopped, and then they were like, oh, I guess he was just joking around. Then the ones where their face hit, did hit, they were like, Jesus Christ, dude. And they were probably so frightened. And then you had to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, 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 sorry. I just thought you were going to catch yourself. I, 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 It was like a, a little rough housing. I was just trying to be rough with the puss. I don't know how you save from that. I do not know how you save face from doing something so aggressively dangerous as trying to smash someone's face into a mirror as you're fucking them. And also that you kept this, like, trophy. I understand the appeal of wanting it. It does give off, like, a Hannibal Lecter art project. Like, you would be like, I got all these handprints, and then you took a picture of it. Or then when the police came into your home after you were arrested and they found all the bodies, they would be like, and then we were able to track all the missing women's fingerprints back because they were all on this mirror. Um... Well, part of it, uh, like, a, a dude's like a conquest. That is something. Guys like to be like, these are my, look at all these things that I that I kept. Uh, there was, uh, I did have a chain of things happening for a little bit where women were, like, leaving things behind. Like, it would be an earring or a fucking, I don't know, an eyelash or a fucking necklace. And, like, things, things, things are falling off of chicks all the time because they're pressing things onto their body all the time. They're always putting on rings or earrings or eyelashes or fucking uh, the colored contacts. There's they're attaching things like cyborgs constantly and so if you bring them over and you start beating them with your dick and they're, they're you're tossing them around the place those things fall off it's like a it's like a, a, a shitty Oldsmobile or something and the loose pieces are just smashing against your bed uh, so I for a little I think it was like three chicks I was like oh I got a piece from each one of them it already sounds creepy and I was like what the fuck am I doing and I threw them out because I'm like that is weird shit to do um I just want to know what happened with these chicks where you smashed their face into the mirror. How you recovered? How did you recover? How did she go, oops, 
Sorry, is your face okay? Is your nose broken? No? You want to keep going then? Sorry, didn't mean to smash your head, dude. God damn. A uh, little concussion never hurt anyone. Actually, it 100% did. Okay, on to the next one, guys. Uh, I used to let my lesbian plug cuck me. Okay, well, hold on, hold on. Let me restart that one. That, that was a horrible reading. Let's start from scratch on this reading. I used to let my lesbian plug cuck me to her. Ooh, that Celsius is coming up. Okay, hold on. Th third time's a charge. I used to let my lesbian plug cuck me to her and her girlfriend for an ounce of weed. Oh, there we go. That, that, that's it. That's it. That's, that Celsius needed to get out, guys. The Celsius always needs to get out. It doesn't want to stay in you. That's the part of what gives you the power from the Celsius is once you put it in your belly, it starts fighting out, and you got to press it down. It's like, yeah, it is similar to getting adrenochrome out of a kid. Maybe there's a, maybe that's the secret ingredient in Celsius is adrenochrome. They started to mass market it. So we, the public get a taste for adrenochrome. And then we are fine with the uh, global elite taking children and mining them for adrenochrome. Because if that is the scenario, I'm in, I'm in. Take the kids, man. Take the kids. Take them all, bro. 50% of kids go to Adrenochrome now. If you want a kid, you have to have two because the first one goes to the Chrome. Those are the rules, man. It's a global farm for the Chrome. We're pro Illuminati over here on the on the Dark Holes podcast. Um, okay, what was I talking about? Oh, this cucking situation. Okay, so basically you would go to pick up weed for an ounce of weed and your your plug was a lesbian, I can already kind of see what kind of chick this is. I bet she had like hand tattoos and stuff, probably kind of butchy side of her head shaved, maybe like black lipstick sometimes, backwards hat on. She would wear like a lot of wife beaters, barely had any tits, kind of like that chick Brittany Reiner or something. That's kind of what I'm picturing in my head, that basketball chick who was stuck in a Russian prison. This is what probably what your plug looked like or was in the realm of that, maybe an Asian version of that or a white version of that. But is something where it's like oh a lot of very masculine very very masculine very tattooed you would come to pick up weed and they were like yeah we don't really have any guy friends because maybe they hate men i don't know maybe they don't associate with uh, straight dudes and also you got to find a straight dude who's willing to participate in this uh, and they go, uh, you know what really turns us on is a cuck scenario, but none of us, f neither one of us fucks dudes. Neither one of us has a guy who we fuck regularly or that we want to fuck that we can bring into this cuck scenario. So we have to almost script it. We gotta, we gotta cast people. We gotta get the casting agent out there to find the perfect cuck. We bought the chair. We got the cuck chair in the corner. Come take a seat. Let's see if it fits. How does it sit down like Goldilocks? Is it just right for you? What do you think? An ounce of weed is the right price. You know what? I, I guess it would depend on. Because I'm assuming if they're cucking you, you're, you're they're you're coming and they're like, okay, you're gonna sit there while we fuck. You're the cuck even though you don't have any uh, sexual relation to us. Because, yeah, it doesn't say, like, it, it, you're a cuck only in fantasy. The, she wasn't fucking your girlfriend in front of you. Let me read that again. I used to let my lesbian plug cuck me to her and her girlfriend for an ounce of weed. Yeah, so you're a cuck only in, in theory, in their minds, in this scenario. It's not like you were actually getting the plug to fuck your girlfriend in front of you. This is her, her fucking her, the love of her life, and you're playing the role of cuck. Uh, for an ounce of weed, I feel like that's a pretty good deal. You get to watch two chicks fuck, and then you get an ounce of weed after? That's like, hey, you know, if you be good and sit down and watch this movie, that's like when it's Saturday and your parents basically give you a, tr a treat for doing a treat. They're like, they're, they're too tired to be like, eat your vegetables. They're like, hey, if, if they just want to be left alone. So they're like, hey, watch this movie. And if you watch the movie without bothering me, which it's a movie you already like, you get pizza at the end. That's a, that's a sweet, I think that's a sweet deal. It would depend on how aggressive they are when they speak to you while they're cucking you. So if they were really being like, 
Oh, you look at this little bitch in the corner. Yeah, you like watching me fuck her, you bitch. You're such a fucking loser. You don't even make enough money to fuck your wife properly. You have ugly clothes and your hairline's bad and you have a little bit of a unibrow that needs to be tweezed and your knuckles are hairy and it's unattractive I and mean, you've never pleased a woman. You also have a soft body and milky man tits and you're short and you are you don't have a, a good sized neck and you have a, a feminine shoulders. They come in real small and you kind of have feminine hips too and and you we can see your little uh, pot belly poking out from your shirt if they're saying shit like that i would be like i don't want to do this anymore this is making me sad if it was just general cuck stuff like yeah you like watching this i'd be like yeah i just give them a thumbs up from the corner or how like severe are they like tying you up and like putting duct tape over your mouth and you're like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and you got to like really sell it uh and how long of a time investment would this be? Because it has to be like if the if she's fucking her for like two hours and you really got to sit there the whole time and just like I'll get bored. Like you can you can't go on your phone or anything the entire time either. You have to watch this chick get fucked. Yeah, they would. Yeah, if it was let's say forty five minutes of a lady getting fucked and it was reasonable cuck talk then I would be like, this is the most bomb deal of all time. I wonder how you got played into that. I guess you just kind of built up a good relationship with your plug and they were like, hey, we kind of need someone for this. Do you think you would be a good guy? Also, you had to have cucky vibes already, I guess. You gave off some sort of cuck aura that, uh, that the lesbians could smell on you. Are you a cuck? That's something we should know. Are you a real life cuck? Hmm. Interesting. Interesting stuff. All right. Next guy. Next one. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, yeah. This one was fucked up. So this one I was going to read first, but I talked about the other one in the intro, so we decided to push this one back. Uh, I used to beat my meat while wearing my friend's hot mom's underwear on my face like an alien face hugger. Ladies and gents, um, I'm going to say that one more time. I used to beat my meat while wearing my friend's mom, my friend's hot mom's underwear on my face like an alien face hugger. The most concerning part of this isn't the betrayal to your friend. It's not the, I guess, the criminal aspect of panty thievery and I, I i don't know this is some sort of sex crime it's some sort of sex crime for sure uh the it's how did you get them how did you get these guy how did you go into your friend's house did was it like hey you were like hey i'm gonna use the bathroom real quick and then you snuck into his mom's room and stole the underwear and then went back, like shoved them in your pocket and then went back to playing video games with your friend. Age is very important on this. If you were like 12 and you didn't really know any better and you were just like the horniest creep of all time, maybe it's kind of acceptable. It's still very, still like psychological issues to, this is worse than Mere Guy for sure. Mere Guy, I at least have some relation to understanding like that. Oh yeah, I'm kind of putting a thing together. This is a, I'm creating my magnum opus of all these handprints on this mirror and it's going to be my masterpiece of all these girls that I fuck this trophy. This, this is just criminal. This is just criminal psycho shit, dude. You couldn't just fantasize. You couldn't just think about her and whack your shit like a regular human being. Your friend's hot mom. You think about her blowing you. You had to go into a room and steal the panties and then put them on your face. Were they used? Yikes. I wonder if you just came across them. If you had to do like a Mission Impossible style heist where you... Like I said, you you kind of escape from your friend from a moment. You go through the house. You find the panty drawer. You take the panties. You escape with them. If that's the scenario, that's much worse than if you were like uh, at your friend's house and you're like, 
oh, you're like, hey, man, uh, I want to, I need, you got, can I have a glass of water? And he goes, yeah, yeah, go to the kitchen, grab a glass of water. And you're walking to the kitchen, you walk by, and a pair of panties like fell out of the laundry hamper, and they're just there on the floor. And then you have this split second, you're like, do I grab them? Do I grab them? And you went and you grabbed them and you shoved them in your pocket and you just kept going. That is less creepy because you're just kind of like you're in the moment you're horny you're like am i gonna do it still horrible still horrible crime that you did is scenario two over scenario one but i think i can respect scenario two slightly more but then following up well i guess once you have the prize you're like i'm going to enjoy it what am i going to keep these panties and then just throw them out i guess you know you could have totally done that you could have totally been like hey what i did was wrong and I'm going to dispose of these. But you went, ah, uh -uh. I'm going to put them on my face. I'm not just going to smell them and ball them up and, and huff them like a, like one of those uh, dudes who loves uh, glue or gas, like spraying into the bag and going, Ugh. One time I saw this dude on the street in Toronto that was huffing. Uh, I don't know if it was nitrous, but maybe it was like the whippets. But he was like huffing them and then was tweaking out on this uh, on this bus stop bench. And he would huff him and then tweak out. And then I, was, I saw him because I was waiting for the bus. And then I got on the bus and then I looked. And he was on the bus, and but like perfectly fine. He was just like, "Yep, just hanging out." And I guess it that stuff hits you so fast that after you're tweaking, you can just go back to being normal. Um, but uh, back, yeah, back to you huffing the pant panties. You put them on your face. They needed to be on your face. You wanted to wear that mask, that luchador esque shit going on. I know in my heart those were some of the best wanks of your life. If you what is it said? I used to beat my meat. Okay, so it's used to. So either you disposed of the panties, you've moved on from that stage in your life. Uh, did it say best friend? No, it just says my friends. So maybe this was a disposable friend. You weren't that close with him. Close enough to get to his mom's panties, that's for sure. But I know that that those nuts, those were real good nuts. I, I know you still think about those nuts. Obviously, you're sending in this thing. You're writing in about it. You really like that. You might still have these, like, lock it away in a drawer somewhere that you crack open every now and again for special occasions. You're like, hey, I got the promotion at work. You know what that means? Put the panties on the face and jack the shit. Fuck a good scotch. I need my mom's ferment. Not my mom's. My mom's friend. My friend's mom fermented old panties to blast over my face and yeah we all got a nut what are you gonna do dude as long as you actually know there i can't condone this in any way it's wrong in every single way but whatever you did it what are we gonna do fucking hunt you down uh oh is it wrong that i have this is the next uh write-in by the way is it wrong that I have sex tapes with my ex while I have a girlfriend now? My ex is okay with it. Girlfriend don't know. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, you, there's okay, there's so many layers to how this is wrong. First off, um is it wrong that you still have these sex tapes? You're you're looking at him obviously. You're obviously, you're not just like, oh, they're in, you're keeping them for some reason. You're either still jerking to them or you're like, yeah, when this relationship ends, I'll crack these things back open like the old scotch. You're going to be like, I'm saving these for the inevitable end of this relationship because I don't have confidence in it. There's some reason you're holding on to these. The fact that, okay, if your girlfriend found out, your current girlfriend found out that you were jork in your shit or you had videos of your ex-girlfriend unless she was a cuck queen which we've already kind of established some cuck stuff on this on the stream unless that that was her kink she'd probably be very upset like let's flip the roles for a second let's say you're her girlfriend has videos of her getting blown out by her ex that she just keeps she just keeps in a folder somewhere and, just, and may i don't know if she's masturbating to him or not but she's like yeah you know i just like to hold on to these memories they're very important to me you would be like what the fuck what the fuck is this dude it would break your little heart wouldn't it so is it wrong 
I mean, it depends on what you want to do with this relationship. Uh, you, I would say you don't have a lot of faith in this relationship ever going anywhere or else you would have gotten rid of these because you would be afraid of losing this chick. But this relationship clearly isn't that important to you. You're like, yeah, fuck this thing. I know it's not going to go anywhere, so might as well keep these golden sex tapes I have that I can go <coughs> jork my shit to whenever I need to. Um, the But the, let's go a layer deeper. What's more fucked up about it is that... Your girlfriend knows you have them while you're with this other girl. Having <laughs> having knowledge with an ex that your current person doesn't know is a level of cheating that supersedes the, the just, like just fucking a stranger and then like it, you move on. That of course is cheating. I mean, unless you guys have agreed that that's okay within the bounds of the relationship. Where uh, some people are poly, some people are doing some shit like that. But, but, hold on. But scheming, scheming, having little plans and little secrets with a previous lover while you're with your new lover. Oh, that's the level. Of, that's the next level. That's like, that's like four levels deeper into the cheating sphere. That's fucking creepy shit, dude. Holy fuck, bro. One time I dated this girl and she bought me a jersey and uh, I was cheating on her a bunch. And then the girl I was cheating on her with knew that this girl had bought me a jersey. And when we were fucking once, she's like, I want to wear one of your T-shirts. And I was like, okay. So I gave her a T-shirt and she went, uh-uh, I want to wear that T-shirt. She pointed to the jersey in my closet because she knew that that girl I was dating bought me that shirt. She wanted to taint it. She wanted me to fuck her in the jersey, so she was like, this is mine now. This gift that this girl gave you, I'm taking this. So your your ex probably loves this. And honestly, this whole thing is getting me hot. All these, yeah, I will admit, as psychotic as the shit you guys send me, the beat and the meat with the mo the hot mom's underwear on the face, the mirror, the, not the cuck thing, the cuck thing that didn't really do anything for me. I don't like to be ridiculed uh, during sex. It doesn't, I don't like that at all. I, it makes me feel bad. I go, ew, no thank you, no thank you. I'm gonna leave now. Someone talks down to me or does something mean to me during sex, I go, uh, I'm bigger than you and I could kill you, okay? No, I don't say that, but I go, no, 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 uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. don't like that, don't like that. I say the rude things to you. I say you're a little dumb horse slut, and then you like it. You don't do that to me. But then also the the sex tapes, all those things definitely got me horny. This, All these write-ins got me super horny, guys. So even though I keep calling you guys creeps and weirdos and cheaters, yeah, yeah, fuck, this is, I get why, because it's hot. It's hot. Oh. Uh, well, that's dark holes, guys. That's dark holes. I guess. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Should I answer this? Is it wrong? Okay. Let me let me actually answer the question first. Uh, is it wrong for you to have those sex tapes? Uh, like it depends on what you want. If you want to have this like secret thing with your ex that turns you on and you're jerking off to it. And part of that is the turn on that you have this secret thing that you're keeping from your girlfriend and it's naughty and wrong, then no. If you want to maintain the relationship with your girlfriend and build that relationship, then yes, then yes, it is wrong. Um, and this is purely from like, a, I wanna say logical, but logical is not the right word, immoral standpoint. <laughs> Not bringing morality into this at all. If you're looking at it from a moral standpoint, yeah, it's wrong in all scenarios. But we leave morality out of this podcast, guys. We're not here for a moral lesson. Yuck. Okay. So, yeah. Take with that what uh, what you want. And none of the rest of these were questions. They were just um, they were just little secrets that you guys sent me. I like it. Uh, everyone stayed anonymous, right? Yeah. I didn't say anyone's name. Uh, all right, guys, that's been Dark Holes. Thank you guys so much. Remember, if you want to uh, find me in other places, you can go to Chaterena.com or Chaterena on all platforms. Uh, all my tour dates are at Chaterena.com. Right now we got Tempe, Tampa, uh, and Chicago up. There's also Pittsburgh is coming soon. Uh, Cincinnati is coming soon. Uh, Toronto is coming soon. That's what's coming. Anyways, that's, that's it. Bye.